Welcome back to another edition of Eat My Shirt. Right here in the rant chair, smoking a filter tube of doom in the place of the lucky strike. Sorting the world's problems out after a glorious day of just bullshit and chores and crabby seniors and everything else. But, since I'm already in a vile mood, I figure we might as well talk about something I find rather amusing. Uh, you guys might remember back in 2018 there was a shooting in New Zealand. Um, some jackass shot up a synagogue, which is a waste of good ammunition in my opinion, but they did it. Or maybe it was a Muslim church, I can't remember. It was a long time ago, right? Before the world went and lost its damn mind. But in the result of that, some jackass who did a terrible fucking thing, live-streamed the whole thing, and used his modern sporting rifle improperly against innocent people that didn't deserve it. And New Zealand, instead of saying, well, this is a tragedy, um, people need to be better armed, they should be carrying a weapon with them all the time, they should be willing and able to use it, they decided, no, we're going full Karen. Uh, we're going to ban the AR and any basic semi-automatic rifle. Uh, not only that, we're going to raise the age of smoking exponentially every year, so you can't have cigarettes anymore. So if you're under a certain age, you'll never have a cigarette in your life legally. And not only that, they're lowering the amount of nicotine in it to zero in X amount of time, which is going to just, don't even get me started on that. That was five years ago, okay? Now you're going to say, well, what does this have to do with anything? Well, five years later, crime is so bad in New Zealand. There are so many property crimes. There are so many hate crimes, you know. And not your, I'm white and I hate you because you're black crimes. It's the other way around where indigenous people are ganging up on the Caucasian variety and committing atrocities in such high numbers that New Zealand's government is now deciding to repeal that stupid fucking law that should have never existed. Which I find more just comical and amusing than I should because... You want to talk about gun control in the free world, New Zealand actually is one of the few places you can still own a semi-automatic anything. And they said, you will turn this in or you're a criminal. They got one of the lowest turnouts for confiscation in history, where people decided, okay, we're going to voluntarily give this up. This was not like Australia. They flat out said, mm, no, we're not doing it. Now, some did, of course. You know, there's always going to be the one group and there shall not be infringed. And when the cops come, oh, oh, I didn't know I was in trouble here. You take my take my freedom away. Just leave me alone. There's always going to be that one asshole in the gun community. Okay. But how is this relevant here in the United States? What happens in Canada and Europe and Australia and New Zealand and South America and in Russia and all these other places surrounding us in the world sphere, they're going one of two ways with it. They're going the way we did in the United States, where most states that have their head pulled out of their ass are like, okay, it's obvious. The more armed and better prepared and better trained people are, the better it is for us because we don't have to do anything. Or they're going the full Karen, which is, no, you can't have a butter knife anymore. And I'm not exaggerating on that. In, in some parts of the UK, you have to be 21 to buy a Thomas the Tank Engine spoon for your baby to feed him. I'm not making this up. You can look it up. The key takeaway of this is elections have consequences. Now, I don't believe in voting anymore because I don't think voting works. Uh, we saw that in 2020, how well your vote was heard, right? They just decided to print them up. And we've been suffering the results of that for four years now. And life's not better. Now, I was not Team Orange Jackass from day one. I never liked the guy. Okay, I liked his antics. I thought they were fun. And I liked a lot of the things he did for America until it came to Chevron Deference, Operation Warp Speed, and the bump stocks. Okay, bump stocks are stupid. They shouldn't exist. However, they exist because of the National Firearms Act. And it's the only foray that you and I will have into getting to at least getting our dick wet with what sounds and feels like the real thing. Bump stocks are like the ladyboys of 
of machine guns. It just, it is what it is. You know, you can pretend all you want, but at the end of the day, you still got your prick and another man. Okay. Yeah. It's a sex reference, but it's something you, the viewer that may not be into guns will understand. But I find it absolutely funny in countries like New Zealand and now uh, Argentina and Brazil. They're like, yeah, um, a lot of these guns that were originally just for the military, uh, we, we need to kind of get some of these in the people's hands because things are getting out of hand. And you'd think Russia is one of the, one of the most pro-gun tr- gun countries on planet Earth. Yes, Fuego, shut up, I can English today. I just choose not to. Uh, they actually were more pro-gun under the Soviets, and the Soviets heavily restricted that, although in theory back then you could own a pistol and even carry it. Nowadays, you're basically limited to manual action, this and that, shotguns for the first five years, usually under three rounds, and it's heavily predicated on need and, and use and justification, and that's what makes America special, because in most of America today, Your reason for owning a gun is because I feel like it. And then you add whatever in there. Whereas in places like even Canada, where a lot of my friends are held hostage, you have to have an intention for sporting purpose for it. You have to have an interest in collecting. You can't just say, I'm going to carry this around loaded because I feel like it, because I do not trust the altruistic intentions of my fellow man. They don't, they don't allow that sort of funny business. And you're seeing where that ends up. You're seeing people with jars of acid attack each other. Uh, people on mopeds, like in Italy, hitting each other with hammers, trying to steal each other's stuff. You're seeing knife attacks, vehicle attacks. You know, like, like in Japan, right? That's one of the most heavily restricted countries on planet Earth for any firearms ownership. You're seeing people with, like, swords or knives flat out go on a slashing rampage and in a crowded place, you know, where nobody's allowed to carry the damn thing in the first place. They're not going to, right? Because they're afraid of getting hemmed up. You're seeing a lot of high casualty, high body count incidents. Curiously enough, one of the most free places to own a firearm on planet Earth is Yemen. It turns out that basically you can own a firearm there because you feel like it. Because even Middle Eastern communist governments uh, acknowledge that, hey, um, you know, you need something in the home because, uh, well, it's not very safe out there. You know, in that part of the world. You can get an offender bender and a couple of people pull out their Kyber pass made pistols that they just bought off the black market and start popping rounds off at each other until they decide to get bored of the activity. It's a thing that happens. Like, I'm not making this up. You can go look this shit up for yourself. Now, do I think this New Zealand thing will go anywhere? No. But it's a step in the right direction. If it's so bad that even their anti-gun legislators are like, hey, uh... <laughs> This isn't working. Um, It's really unsafe here now, even for us. You know, if we give the people back the toys they're not allowed to have anymore, maybe things will calm down a little bit and they'll do the dirty work for us. Right? And I think that that's going to happen in parts of the United States. That's just my personal thoughts. That things are going to get so bad in certain areas that people are going to get fed up enough. They're like, you know what? I don't care if I'm legally allowed to have this or not. I'm going to get one. I'm going to carry one, and these people are going to fuck around, and I'm going to help them find out, and they're going to see the error in their ways, they're going to regret every poor life choice they ever made, and then I will take away their birthday, and they'll stop breathing. And they may get hemmed up for it, and they'll do some time in prison. But at the end of the day, when that goes to the Supreme Court, because enough people will take up for it in the gun community, You know, they're going to, it's going to at least put some negative publicity on gun control and put the real struggle in the public spotlight. And, you know, I mean, it's sad. Like, I know of two cases, like up in Canada, I think, one guy's house was getting burned down by a local biker gang and it was caught on doorbell cam. He'd done everything right. He barricaded himself in. He called the police. 
Finally, he just had to go out there with his rifle and start shooting fuckers. And instead of, you know, giving a guy a medal and a better gun, like they should have done, they put him in prison for murder. Well, that's not murder to you and I. That's self-defense. Like, somebody trying to burn you out of your house, that's a pretty good fucking excuse to shoot somebody. Like, it's, it's in the top three. You know, I, I remember a story a couple years back, a guy in Australia, he didn't even have to shoot anybody. He just came outside without even the gun loaded. You know, he had the empty chamber with his bolt-action surplus gun and some rounds in the magazine. And because the criminal felt threatened, because there was the inherent feel of violence, he is now serving time in prison. And they shredded his classic Milserp gun in a wood chipper, instead of putting the criminal in the wood chipper, who was clearly robbing and raping somebody. Like, it's bad when the police won't show up and your neighbor has to bust out their Elmer Fudgat and come over and try and deal with the problem, you know? And that's a key takeaway from all this, man. You can't trust the cops. You can't trust the government. You, once you lose your rights, they're gone. Okay, you vote your way into communism. You shoot your way out of it. And I and I hope the best for my New Zealand brothers and sisters out there who are wanting to get their shit back. And if you're in New Zealand or if you're interested in the place, uh, start raising hell with lawmakers and, and get the shit reversed. Because, you know, the world's going to fall apart someday, and when it does, you're going to want your neighbor that's, you know, into guns on your side. Like, even if you're not into guns, you know, there are neighbors out there just like me who sit calmly in their chair waiting for the day that somebody's going to fuck around and find out. As always, a cigarette burns the fingers. I have shit to do, an old person to take care of, and I'm going to go continue to sit upon my butthole while I get these things done. If you like the video, like the video. If you don't, I don't really care. Uh, that's a you problem, not a me problem. And uh, word of the day, what the hell, why not? Friendly boobs, because that's what gets men in trouble, you know. That way I can see who's really paying attention here in class. <laughs>